Hello everyone. Today we the students of group 14 will be talking about a project that we undertook as a part of our course PL246 heat transfer in our fourth semester at IIT Bombay. Our topic was optimization of multilayer insulation. So a brief overview. Our study is broadly based upon improving the storage of cryogenic materials. Cryogenic materials have great applications in the medical field, especially diagnosis. Now, storage of cryogenics demands very low temperatures to be maintained for which MLI, that is, multi-layer insulation systems, are used. However, the current system has problems related to stability, and we aim to solve those by introducing a structure within the layers which can guarantee stability and maintain storage temperature. So first, we decide on a structure, and once that is done, we advance towards the materials to be used. With this, we finally aim to help improve the quality of storage facilities to make applications better. For some background, MLI is mainly the prevention of heat loss using the reflective properties of multiple layers of thin sheets with vacuum in between them. This vacuum can sometimes cause our system to collapse, which causes inefficiency in the storage facility, and this might deteriorate the material to some extent, which is where the problem begins. According to an article by NASA Tech Briefs, MLI is the best thermal insulation system for use in a vacuum, and is the thermal insulation system of choice for spacecraft and cryogenic systems. However, conventional MLI has several disadvantages. It is difficult and sometimes even impossible to maintain the desired gap between the film layers. Also, fabrication and installation are labor-intensive and can be difficult. The bigger picture aims at improving storage facilities of cryogenic materials. by providing stability to the overall system while not compromising on the heat loss factor at the same time explaining the schematics to explain our system we have thin reflective sheets stacked at a particular distance with vacuum in between between these mli layers that is the yellow layers that can be seen on the screen we propose placing a spacer structure to give it stability to withstand external pressure and ensure stability of mli layers to get an idea of the solution using some broad approximations firstly for the structure of the yellow layer we strongly believe that solid structures like small cuboids stacked together or small cylinders with their bases standing on layers might hold the structure sufficiently we can also implement a sheet based network of solids to hold the structure secondly for the relation of heat flux to the number of mli layers and units within the inner layer on increasing the mli layers the reflection of heat waves would increase thus decreasing the heat loss as the units within a layer increase conduction through them would also increase however it's important to note that these units might also reflect back and absorb some heat waves so it may increase or decrease the heat loss depending on the numbers we obtain thus the system under consideration contains all three modes of heat transfer which are conduction convection and radiation The MLI system is surrounded by air, which causes convection with the outer layer. Another mode of heat loss taking place here is radiation. The heat rays radiated by the surrounding walls are reflected back when they strike the outer layer, and the ones that do enter further are reflected back by the inner layer. Thus, there is radiation taking place between the layer and the surroundings, and also within the layers. Conduction also occurs through the added yellow spacer layer. For a typical MLI system to store cryogenics, we assume the temperature of our surrounding to be 310 Kelvin, and the temperature at which cryogenic material needs to be stored to be around 120 Kelvin. The yellow layer added for structural stability adds to heat transfer via conduction, as it is in contact with the MLI layers. Thus, to reduce this conduction, we need to reduce the surface area of the layer without compromising its stability. So we test two structured layers. one with diamond structure and one with a rectangular grid structure to see which one satisfies our criteria these structures are stacked as shown in the figure and are made of insulating material by careful calculations in matlab software on a specific structure of spacer material we find heat transfer coefficient for all three modes of heat transfer which can then be combined to find the overall heat transfer coefficient we use polyester as the material for the spacer structure and the aluminium for mli layers themselves we assume the cross sectional area of mli layers to be 1 meter square and the width of the complete mli system to be around 1 mm for our mli system all three modes of heat transfer are present conduction convection and radiation so 
let's start with the first one that is conduction conductive heat transfer takes place due to the addition of space and material between the thin mli layer calculate heat loss by conduction we find the value of conductive resistance in the diamond structure by making a for loop for various layers of diamond structure we can find the heat loss using the temperature difference between the topmost and the bottommost layer so varying values of total number of layers in mli we observe the following range of values of reciprocal of conductive resistance given by uc values of heat transfer by conduction are shown by qc the next mode of heat transfer is convection heat transfer via convection takes place on the topmost layer which is in contact with the surrounding and the bottommost layer which is in contact with the fluid present inside the multi layered box convection between these layers can be neglected due to the near vacuum conditions between the layers now we assume free convection at both the top and bottom layer since top surface is the upper surface of the cold plate and the lower surface is the bottom surface of the hot plate we use the appropriate nusselt number correlation after finding the rally number using the nusselt number we can find the convection coefficient on both surfaces and hence the convective resistance the values of reciprocal of convective resistance are shown by uh_t and uh_b the last and the most significant mode of heat transfer is radiation radiative heat transfer takes place between the mli sheets for varying values of total number of layers in mli the range of values of radiative resistance can be shown by ur so the problem that we are aiming to solve can be stated as follows we consider a typical conventional multi layer insulation system consisting of some metallized film with vacuum in between them with the following parameters temperature of the surrounding atmosphere is at 310 kelvin temperature of the cryogenic material inside the layer is at 120 kelvin total thickness of the mli system is 1 mm and surface area of the mli layer is 1 m squared however maintaining the desired gap between the mli layer has certain issues the vacuum in between causes the layer to collapse which in turn can make the process less efficient to solve this problem of maintaining gap between mli layers we need to develop an appropriate spacer structure to fill in between the layers which would give stability to the mli system which introduces this conductive heat transfer we aim to optimize the heat loss by performing extensive heat transfer calculations on two different spacer structures that are diamond like and a rectangular grid structure also by varying different geometric parameters such as the number of mli layers or the number of diamond structures within a layer we can further minimize energy loss now coming to the temperature profile firstly the temperature profile is divided into three parts two of which are outside the sheet and the other which is inside the sheet for the outside part it can be easily seen that convection is dominant and so the corresponding temperature profile is drawn for the middle part radiation is dominant which can be shown in the succeeding part for the radiation curve it's bent due to the leading term of the curve equation being dependent on t to the power 4 where t is the temperature Furthermore, concavity and convexity of the curve can be determined using heat transfer balance. The change in temperature in the bottom side of the sheet is greater than the change in the top side of the sheet. Hence, we can conclude that the magnitude of the slope is increasing as we move to the bottom of the sheet from the top of the sheet. That is, the curve is concave in nature. Therefore, the curve in the middle part of the temperature profile is concave and bent. Now, let's get into calculating the heat loss and finally optimizing that. we find the heat loss in two of our structures basic methodology is the same in both we aim to find the overall heat transfer coefficient for the system which is a combination of conductive convective and radiative heat transfer coefficient for conduction depending upon geometry we find the value of resistance r by creating loops in matlab the value of reciprocal of conductive resistance that is the ease with which conduction can transfer heat can be found as uc which is the reciprocal of r for radiation heat transfer the value of radiative resistance can be found from the formula as shown on the slide for convection we first find the rally number using the formula as shown on the slide after that we use the appropriate nusselt number correlation for the specified geometry that is the upper surface of a cold plate and the bottom surface of a hot plate the length scale to be used is the ratio of area of cross section of the layer and the perimeter of the layer 
Using the Nusselt number, we can then find the convection coefficients for top and bottom surfaces using the relations shown on the slide. Finally, we calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient. We perform the same calculations on the two different spaces structures that are the diamond structure and the rectangular structure as shown on the slide. For the diamond structure, the overall MLI system contains of several sheets of aluminum between which we are horizontally placing a number of diamond structures. For the rectangular grid structure, we are placing a complete grid of rectangular plates in between the layers. This structure is basically composed of plates arranged in two dimensions, cross-cutting each other. So the structure that is shown in the slide can be assumed to directly lie in between the two MLI layers. For the diamond structure, the value of overall heat transfer coefficient is around 0.03 watt per Kelvin, and the total heat loss is around 6 watts. With almost the same parameters and the same number of MLI layers in structure, for the rectangular grid, overall heat transfer coefficient is around 0.13 watt per Kelvin, and the total heat loss is around 24 watts. So to minimize the heat loss, we select the diamond structure. Now to further optimize the heat loss, we need to select appropriate geometric parameters, such as total number of layers in MLI and the number of diamond structures in one layer. So we plot the heat loss versus the number of MLI layers as shown in the slide. For the graph on the left, we can infer that heat loss decreases with increase in number of MLI layers. And from the graph on the right, we can conclude that heat loss will decrease with increase in number of diamond structures. To finally sum up, we find that a layer with diamond structures made up of polyester is well suited to hold our system. Furthermore, the calculations tell us that the heat loss increases with increase in number of diamond structures and also increases with increase in number of MLI layers. When we incorporate these changes into our current system, we can store cryogenics within the desired temperature range with greater efficiency. We reduce the material that goes to waste and we also improve its quality at the same time. What else can be done in the future? We have essentially optimized the system of multi-layer insulation for applications in cryogenics. It can similarly be optimized for applications in different fields, such as in spacecraft and satellite, using different materials and applying the valid boundary layer conditions. Thank you.